I do invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we are, we are here this day because you have brought us to this place. You brought us here in the hearing of your word. You brought us here to receive your sacrament for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, we pray that same spirit would lead and guide us as we meditate upon your word. As we live out lives that are pleasing to you, walking away, you would have us walk under your blessing. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So how's your new year going so far? Pretty good? I've got a sinus infection and my back hurts. Yeah, it's great so far. You know, I had a sinus infection last year at the start of the year. I got one this year at the start of the year. I'm hoping this doesn't become an annual pattern. But you know, you never really know what's going to happen in the new year, do you? Anybody know what's going to happen to him this year? You never really don't. You know, I think I would probably guess that last year at this time, you were thinking, well, this is going to happen this year, and the year went through, and a lot of things happened that you maybe didn't expect. And that's kind of the way it is, really, really every year, right? We start off a new year, great expectations, maybe some great ideas, maybe some expectations and great things, and maybe they come along, maybe they don't. Maybe you start out with great health, and, and maybe the course of the year you get sick. You just don't know what's going to happen. But one thing we know is that God blesses us. And this blessing are for us and with us, and they remain a part of our lives no matter what happens. You know, the thing about this life is that these bodies, you know, these things we live in here, they're apt to change at any moment. The material blessings that we have in our lives, you know, that are around us, they can come and go. I mean, there's news again of all the flooding and things of people's houses are gone. You know, you just don't know about those things. You have something materially one day, maybe the next day is gone. But there's one thing that we have. It's the blessing of God. And today I thought, you know, what a good way to start out the year. Let's, let's start out the year with a solid foundation of our faith. And review again some of the blessings that God's given us. Things that are things that endure. And so this month, this month of January, each week I'm going to talk about the different blessings of God. And today we're going to talk about the blessings of God in Christ in our lives. I'm going to be focusing on Ephesians 1 today because it starts out, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He has blessed us in Christ as God has. And one of the things about this passage that's so cool is that it talks about four different specific blessings that we have that are ours in Christ. And each one of those is introduced... A little two-word phrase where it's in Him. Talking about in Christ. And so we're going to look at those four things that God promises us. Four things to lay a foundation for us so that no matter what else happens this year, we can know and be assured that these things are ours. The first one is, is that God chose us. He adopted us as sons. The scripture reads, He chose us in Him. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ. He chose us in him. What's the significance of being chosen by God? Being chosen. You know, that's a big deal. Remember, remember your kids, you know, and, and they would always, like the teacher would go, okay, here's the two team captains, and they're going to choose up sides, and you wanted to be on one side. And, and when that person was choosing over there, choose me, right? Choose me, choose me. You know, and you never knew if that was going to work out. But the amazing thing about this relationship we have with God is we couldn't even do this. Scripture teaches us that we are born and conceived in sin. Scripture teaches us that we are born separated from God. Scripture teaches us that we would run the absolute opposite way from our God unless He had come and chosen us. See, we couldn't save ourselves. We didn't have that ability. We didn't have that power. But God, out of His, out of His great love for us, came and chose us. He, as the Word says, He adopted us. As his sons, which means we, we are a part of his family. And, and that's a huge thing because we know that God chose us. It tells us how special we are to our God. It wasn't just some person wandering around, you know, going, oh, maybe that one's okay. But he chose us. And what does it say? He set us apart that we should be holy and blameless before him. 
holiness is, is about being set apart by God. We're set apart as his people. Peter writes about this in his epistle. He says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you've received mercy. This whole thing of God choosing us is huge. He wants you. <laughs> he loves you. He wants you in his family. And that's one thing. One of the blessings we have is that he chose us and set us apart. He's adopted us. And that's something that doesn't change. Second blessing we have in him is redemption. The word reads, in him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us. In him we have redemption through his blood. What's, what's the significance of redemption? Well, again, huge thing. It, it would be like if, if you had a huge debt and unless you paid off the debt, you're going to be thrown in prison for the rest of your life. And suddenly somebody comes along and says, I'm going to pay off that debt. They're, they're redeeming you. So I'm going to pay it off. And, and you get to live free the rest of your life. See, the deal is about redemption is that we owe God a debt. A debt we could never pay. God teaches His Word. We're to be perfect as our Father in Heaven is perfect. And none of us is perfect. We would stand condemned. I know we don't, you know, we don't like to talk about the wrath of God very often because it's kind of, it kind of makes us feel uncomfortable. But the, 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 but the truth is, without God's redemption, without Christ working in our lives, we would be lost and condemned for all eternity. We would, we, our future would be literally the fires of hell. But Christ, Christ, when he died on the cross and shed his blood, he paid our debt. And that debt was owed to God. He paid it to God. He said, I'm turning this over. I have taken these people's place. So instead of punishment, they receive forgiveness of sins. That is powerful. It is good news. By grace we've been saved through faith, not of our works, lest anyone should boast, right? By grace, Christ has paid our debt. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, forgiveness by grace. It is a huge piece that we're free from the fear of God's wrath, of God's judgment. Instead, promises. Promises. It's a blessing. The third blessing we have in this text is, is our inheritance. It reads, in him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. What, what's an inheritance? In him we've obtained an inheritance. What's an inheritance? Inheritance is, is generally a gift, something given to you. It generally happens after someone dies. You, you receive an inheritance. You receive something. It wasn't yours. But it's given to you as a gift. You know, Jesus died. Jesus died so we would have an inheritance. Jesus gave up the riches of heaven, came to this earth, walked on this earth, lived, died, was raised again so that we would have an inheritance. He gave up the riches of heaven so that we would have the riches of heaven. And in the inheritance we have this promise, this promise of now, not eternal fires in hell, but everlasting life with, it, with God and all of His glory in the riches of heaven, it's, it's ours. It's 100% guaranteed. It's, it's ours. You know, here on, on this earth, you know, people uh, maybe die and maybe there's an inheritance to be uh, distributed. And it gets kind of crazy sometimes because people fight over it. You know, especially you hear the high, high profile of, of people very rich, maybe married later in life, and there's a fight between the spouse and the kids and this kind of thing. And they're fighting when I'm saying, you know, 100% is mine. They're going, no, 50% is mine. 50% can be yours. They're going, no, 70% is mine. 30% can be yours. And they're fighting over the inheritance. I mean, the cool thing about God's inheritance is 100% ours. Every one of us. 100%. We get 100% of the riches of heaven. I'm not quite sure how that works out. But 100%. 
God says, I want you to have, I want you to have everything that I have. It's kind of like the parable of the, of the, of the prodigal son. You remember the, the prodigal son, he goes off and squanders his part of the inheritance with his father. And he comes back and, and the father welcomes him and they kill some fatty calf. They have the big party. Because why? Because again, he's received everything the father has. Even the older son, the older son who was, who was complaining because he never killed me the fatty calf. What does the father say to him? He says, everything I've had has always been yours. You see, that's our inheritance. 100% of what God has is ours. The riches of heaven is ours. We each get 100% of that inheritance. What a blessing that is. What a blessing that is. And then comes that fourth blessing we talked about in the scripture. It reads, In him also, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Here's the, here's the fourth blessing. It's guaranteed. Everything that God has promised to us is guaranteed by the power of the Holy Spirit. This inheritance, this richness of heaven, the greatness that he is waiting for us, it's guaranteed. You know, this is not like some lifetime warranty so that if something breaks, maybe you can get a replacement. This is a guarantee. The promise is endures. It will never go away. What a deal. It's guaranteed by the seal upon us by the power of the Holy Spirit. It happens in water and word and baptism. The, the Spirit comes to us when we receive Christ's body and blood and the, and the bread and wine. And, and we receive the forgiveness of sins and life and salvation. It's guaranteed. That's what the Spirit is working in our hearts and our lives. We don't ever have to wonder and go through this life as other things may come and go. We don't have to wonder, is this, is this really a true thing that we're going to get from our God? It's guaranteed. Paul, when he was writing to the Corinthians, was, was writing about this. In 2 Corinthians 5, we read, For a while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened. Not that we should, would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Right? Talks about, while we are still in this tent, we groan. We're burdened. But God has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. There's not a one of us that knows what's going to happen in our lives this year. Not a one of us. We don't know. It could be, it could be the greatest year ever in your life. It could be the worst year ever in your life. You may be blessed with great health. You may get ill. You may have all the riches like Solomon. You may become very poor. We don't know. But what we have is this foundation of faith for the blessings of God in our lives. We're blessed. We're blessed because he chose us. He chose us and we're his people. We're blessed because we have this redemption that Christ has paid his blood. We don't ever have to wonder whether we've done it before God because God has done it for us. Jesus. We're blessed because we have this promised inheritance, this riches of heaven. We're blessed because it's guaranteed in our lives. Doesn't matter. Everything else can come up and down. But this faith is that which is established in us. You know, I, I talk to a lot of people, and I'm sure you do too, through the trials and the, and the conditions of life. And, and people talk sometimes about how their faith is what's pulling them through. How their faith is the one thing that's certain in their life. And that's it. This faith, this blessing that we have in Christ Jesus, is that faith that will see us through ups and downs in this life because it's constant. We never have to worry. We never have to wonder. So this year, I pray that the hope that we have in this Jesus, the hope that we have in Him, this blessing we have in Him, will be that foundation for you every day. Every day. Shall we pray? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for these blessings. We thank you that in Christ we've received them. We thank you that by the power of his Holy Spirit they are guaranteed for us. Lord, we don't know what today's going to bring. But we know you're the one that brings us blessings. So Lord, we pray that you would watch over us, that you would keep us. 
That you would keep us strong in this faith to which you've called us. That you would keep us strong in our walk every day with you, Lord. That every day, when we wake up and know we're blessed by God. We ask this in your name. Amen. Continue now with the gathering of our offerings.